Hello friends, subscribers and new viewers of this channel and welcome to machine learning and large language model tutorials. We are continuing the series of tutorials on how to install and run locally large language models. In this video tutorial we will cover one very important and very useful small model called DeepScaler R1 with 1.5 billion parameters. In the category of small models, this is arguably and possibly one of the best models that specialized for advanced mathematics problems. And the reason for that is that this model is specially tuned for problems that appear on Mathematics International Olympiad. Believe it or not, this model is fine-tuned on a set of 40,000 of advanced mathematics problems and as such, it's ideal for mathematics researchers, for scientists, for students, as well as for other people who are interested in solving math problems. And this is especially the case for control engineers. Those of you who don't know, I have a PhD in control engineering and math is something that we really need. And consequently, I need to use this model in my control engineering practice. In this video tutorial, we explain how to install this model on a local computer as well as this graphics user interface. This graphics user interface will enable you to easily interact with the model. Namely, let's run this simple demonstration. Over here we ask how to solve the equation x squared plus sine x is equal to 0.1. Note that this is a transcendental equation and this equation doesn't have the solution in a closed form. And the model is smart enough to solve this equation. You can see that it properly recognizes that this is a transcendental equation and it provides you a solution over here. And also you can see here verification and a nice latex generated output, which you can include in your report or some engineering document. You can simply export this complete calculation. A lot of YouTubers and people explaining and teaching large language models tend to skip important details about a particular model. However, in order to properly understand the model and its capabilities, you need to know several important things. First of all, you need to understand what is the data set that's used to train this model or fine tune the model. So let's go over this data set and let's present a little bit more information about this model. The model is fine-tuned from DeepSeq R1 Distill Quen 1.5 billion parameter model using distributed reinforcement learning to scale up to long context lengths. The model is fine-tuned on 40,000 problem answer pairs from AIME problems, AMC problems, OmniMath dataset and still dataset. And let's explain what are these data sets. AIME problems refer to the challenging mathematics problems presented on the American Invitational Mathematics Examination. This is a competition for high school students where each question requires an integer answer between 0 and 999, testing a wide range of mathematical concepts like algebra, geometry, number theory, and combinatorics, often dem demanding creative solutions and deep understanding of mathematical relationships. Then, AMC problems. AMC stands for American Mathematics Competition, it's better known as the AMC, is the first step to becoming America's best math athlete and going all the way to the math Olympiad. But the AMC is so much more than just the pathway to winning the title of America's greatest high school mathematician. And OmniMath is a comprehensive and challenging benchmark specifically designed to compare and assess LLM's mathematical reasoning and the, at the Olympiad level. That is, this model can solve problems at the most complex level. That is, at the Olympiad level. And over here, you can see the comparison of the model with the DeepSeq R1 model and with O1 Preview. You can see different data sets and you can see the average score. 
you can see that this model has much better average score compared to DeepSeq R1. And DeepSeq R1 is probably the best model for mathematics. Consequently, this model is even better than DeepSeq. However, I will explore the capabilities of this model in my future tutorials. The first step is to download and install Olama. For those of you who are not familiar with Olama, Olama is a simple to use framework for running large language models locally. So the story will go like this. First of all, we will install Olama and then we are going to install Open Web UI and we are going to call Olama model from web UI to generate a graphics user interface. Go to the Olama website and click on download and select Windows and click on download for Windows and save the file in the downloads folder. It's going to take maybe one minute to download the model. After the model is downloaded you need to just to click on the installation file let's wait until it appears let me just double click here F5 to refresh just wait for a while and let's after the file is downloaded double click on the file and installation process will start it is super easy you'll just click next several times and the llama will be installed after the llama is installed you need to verify the installation first of all click over here and you will see this cute Olama icon and you can click on this. You can see that Olama is running in the background. The next step is to open a terminal or better to say command prompt and over here in the command prompt just type Olama and you will see this response if Olama is installed. The next step is to download the model. To download the model you need to go back to Olama website and over here you need to search for model name. Type over here Deep Scaler and click on the model and over here you will see this installation command. Copy this command however don't execute it immediately in the terminal. Let's go in the command prompt. Paste the command and instead of run type pull. And this command will actually pull the model. That is, it will download the model and later on we will test the model. So press enter and wait. After the model is downloaded, type Olama list to list all the models and you can see it over here. Let's run this model to test it. To test this model, simply type Olama run and then copy the name of the model and paste it here and press enter. And over here, let's ask who are you? To see that the model is working. Greetings, I'm DeepSeq R1 and you can see what it is. However, this is not exactly DeepSeq, it's actually Deep Scalar model. However, it's being fine-tuned. So let's exit by pressing buy over here and that's it. The next step is to create a workspace folder and to install the necessary library such that we can run this model in a graphics user interface. To create a workspace folder, first go to the root C drive, then create a folder called test model. Then let's navigate to this folder and over here let's create a Python virtual environment. However, before you do that, verify your Python version. You can see that I'm running Python 3.12.8. However, here's one very important detail. My suggestion is to install two things. Before you even create a virtual environment, make sure that you have NVIDIA CUDA Toolkit and Microsoft Visual C++. Most likely, if you are playing with machine learning algorithms, you will have both of these programs. However, if you don't have them, to install Microsoft Visual Studio C++, open Google and search Microsoft Visual Studio C++, then click over here. Then go over here and download the Community Edition. After you download the Community Edition, just click on the Installed file and you will automatically install Community Edition Microsoft Visual Studio C++. Another thing that you need to have is NVIDIA CUDA Toolkit. To do that, search for NVIDIA CUDA Toolkit, then click over here, then click on Download Now, 
and you can simply ignore this windows this architecture select your windows version local installation download this file and install both of these programs are necessary for successfully installing and running pytorch on your computer another important thing to keep in mind is that you need to have an appropriate python version namely i discovered that python 3.13 does not work well with pytorch Consequently, install Python 3.12 or Python 3.11 or any older version. For example, you can go with 3.10, 3.11 or 3.12. 3.13, to stress again, does not support PyTorch. Okay, once you install these programs, you can continue further. Consequently, create... A Python virtual environment, oops, I made an error. First of all, you need to execute this command to create a Python virtual environment. And after you create Python virtual environment, you need to activate it by executing this command. And over here, you will see that your virtual environment is active. To install web UI, you just need this library, which contains a large number of packages. To run this library, or better to say to install this library, you need to run this. And consequently, this whole process will take a while, maybe even 5 to 10 minutes since you're, you're installing probably maybe even up to 50 different Python packages. So be patient. And finally, to start Open Web UI, you simply need to type this Open Web UI Serve. And you will see in this terminal that the local address will appear consequently be patient so wait until the address appears over here it will it will appear let's just wait for a while and here it is now here's one issue if you just try to open this address that is if you copy this let me copy it like this and if you go to your web browser and if you try to open this address, you might see an error. However, so what is the thing over here? You need to erase these zeros and to type local host and press enter. And now open web UI will start. Click on get started. Enter your name. You don't need to enter even your real name. You don't need your real email address however i will put my email address over here and put some password over here you're creating account on your local system that is you're creating administrator account you're not accessing online you're just running everything on your local computer and click here and here you are let's now just click here and over here you can click and you can select the model deep scalar and let's ask a question how to solve a quadratic no not quadratic equation that's too easy how to solve this equation let's give the equation from the beginning of this tutorial sine x plus let's go with 0.5 x is equal to minus 0. 0, 1. and let's send the message and now model is working now let's wait for a while and let's look what's happening in the task manager over here with our cpu and with our gpu we can see that the gpu immediately start running we can see how big is the model you can see that the gpu memory usage over here you can see that currently the gpu is running however it's not only running, the model is being loaded first, and then after that, the computations will start. And over here, you can see the result, you can see the complete procedure, and you can see nice answer over here. This is really, really impressive. Okay, that's all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I'm creating, please press the like and subscribe buttons, and see you in the next video tutorial.